What's happening everybody? These are my top seven things to do in Ischia, Italy. Located 19 miles away from the city of Napoli, Ischia is actually the largest island in the Neapolitan archipelago. It is about an hour and a half ferry ride from Napoli itself, and the island is known as the Green Island, and is famous for an abundance of natural beauty, its charm, ability to relax, and of course, adventure. So talking about adventure, let's kick off the list with the first thing to do being to hike Mount Epomeo. Now, Mount Apomio is actually the highest point on the entire island of Ischia. The mountain itself is 2,589 feet above sea level. So being an island, that will give you a pretty darn good vantage point. Now, the hike itself is relatively easy. It's only 3.2 miles out and back. So to get there and to get back, 3.2 miles, not too bad at all. It's a little steep, but definitely fun and enjoyable. And the views along the way and the setting is absolutely insane. You can see lots of lush greenery beautiful vineyards, you can see the island of Procida, Capri, you can see Mount Vesuvius, and some other areas in the Gulf of Naples. Now to begin the hike to Mount Apomio, you could take the bus, being the CD or CS, one runs counterclockwise, one runs clockwise, to the town of Serrera Fontana, or Fontana, just look at Google Maps and it'll show you. Look for a statue of Jesus present and that'll be an indication to get off. And then the hike is very easily labeled and uh, not too hard to find and navigate from there at all. Now, unfortunately, I wasn't able to hike to the very top because I was short on time in Ischia, but there's a little pull-off point along the way which still gives you a great view of the sort of south side of the island and just the views and experience of doing the hike is a great way to see an interesting part of Ischia and as much of the island and surrounding area as possible. So the second thing on my list of things to do in Ischia is an absolute must do, as they all are, but is also the most iconic site and probably the most famous thing that Ischia has to offer. That is to visit the Castello Aragonese. Now the Castello, or castle, Aragonese is a massive castle perched up upon this mountain or cliff, tall hill, whatever you want to call it, that is connected to the main island of Ischia by this little walking area, not necessarily a bridge, more of like a long elongated pier which gives you grand, scenic, mesmerizing sights of this fantastical castle. Now, the history of this area was it was built all the way back in 474 BC by Hiero of Syracuse. It was later taken over by the Romans and eventually became known as the Castello Aragonese that it is today. The actual area has a castle, a village was used as a fortress for lots of military uh, battles or defenses, and is just so ridiculously scenic and stunning. I absolutely loved being able to visit this, even though it was closed for entry, just being able to walk up to it and witness it was very scenic. It is only about less than an hour walk from Ischia Porto, or where you come in on the ferry. You can easily take a bus to Ischia Ponte as well, and it'll take you right at the foot of the Castello Aragonese. So it is a must visit, guys, whether you can go up and spend a whole bunch of time exploring the actual village and castle itself, or just looking at it from below and marveling at it. Definitely a must see, and it's very famous and iconic for good reason. Now, number three on the list isn't as iconic as the Castello Aragonese, but it's just as famous and popular to do when visiting. And this is going to be to visit the hot springs of Ischia, because Ischia, the island, has a lot of volcanic activity, which provides some hot springs, which are just essentially pools of water that are heated from the volcanic activity, making it for perfect natural hot tubs and some of the most beautiful and scenic places in Italy. Now, there's a few ways to go about this. I personally recommend doing a bit of a free, sort of adventurous way by visiting the Bahia Sorghetto. Now, this is located in the town of Panza, which you can easily reach by the CD or CS buses again. I went in the winter, but during the summer, apparently the ocean water at the bay itself is so warm that it is like a hot spring water there. So people will kind of make their own hot springs with rocks and kind of contain hot air's water to bathe in. People even cook potatoes and eggs and stuff like that. The ocean water is that warm. I went in the winter and I noticed that the ocean water wasn't freezing, but it wasn't hot either. It was probably like a lukewarm room temperature sort of feeling, but there were still actually hot springs I could access, which were just a little bit to the left of the main cove in Bay Area through this little cave. 
And in the cave, there are some hot springs. There was a resident worker that was tending to him and kind of uh, set me up, gave me some coffee and some oranges. And he did expect to be tipped. So keep in mind, you might want to give him like five or 10 euros for however long you're there. It really depends. But really cool to know that you can visit hot springs during the winter or the summer season for free. Now, there are some other options for visiting the hot springs, but they will not be free. They will be public sort of thermal baths or thermal gardens. And they normally cost about 30 to 40 euros for the entire day. So a little bit pricey, but I'm sure it would definitely be worth it to get that magical hot spring experience. And the two places I would recommend is number one, going to be the Poseidon or Neptuno Thermal Bath and Gardens. It has 22 different baths and springs of varying temperatures and sizes. It is also located between the town of Panza and Forio. So maybe you could hit that up in combination with the Sorghetto, the Bay of Sorghetto that is, because it's only like a town or half a town over to the north side of the island. Now the other public thermal garden, hot spring, whatever you want to call it, that I recommend is going to be called the Negombo Thermal Gardens. Now these are located near the town of Laco Ameno, which is the northwestern portion of the island. It's also pretty scenic because it's by the Bay of San Montano or Spaggia de San Montano. It has 12 different hot springs of varying sizes and temperatures, and also a very scenic, really cool Japanese labyrinth garden, which the picture will definitely maybe make you want to go or not want to go. It's up to you. But those are the two public options that I recommend if you're not interested in the free one or you want to do a free one and a public one. Now, number four on my list is going to be a beautiful architectural and natural experience, which is to visit the Chiesa del Sorcoso near the town of Forio. Now, the Chiesa del Sorcoso is a very scenic, all white church overlooking the Tyrrhenian Sea, and it is perched above the cliffs, giving it a very dramatic destination with a very beautiful aesthetic appearance. Behind you, you can also see some stunning views of the mountains in the island, most notably Mount Apomio, which maybe you hiked earlier or you're going to get to at some point, or you just want to appreciate the grand size and beauty of it. Some interesting history about this church which was built back in 1350, and it was influenced by some sort of Greek and Byzantine architectural design, which to me makes a lot of sense because that is a sort of image or view I picture in the Mediterranean islands off of Greece, like Santorini or who knows. It's very scenic. You can also see lots of towns on Ischia, up and down the coast. You might be able to see some other islands surrounding you. It's a great place to also see some architecture inside the church. But for me, what takes the cake away is the just sheer natural beauty of the location of this church. It is also located only minutes away from Forio, which we'll talk about more later. So it's very accessible by bus and you can easily fit it into a day of doing other things as well. Now, if you're a budget traveler like me, you will inevitably do number five just by way of doing these other things, which is to take the bus around Ischia. Now, of course, this is very useful to do because it's a great way to get to these locations that we've talked about thus far, but I really enjoy just taking the bus as an experience by itself because first of all, the bus tickets are very cheap, only about four to five euros for the entire day. And you can see so much by either taking the CD or CS bus line. Again, those are one that's, I don't remember which is which, but one is counterclockwise, one is clockwise. Along this bus ride, you'll pass through beautiful towns, little villages, the countryside, seeing vineyards and farms. You'll go along the coast with beautiful views of the water. You'll also wind through the mountains and see different sort of mountainy towns and stunning views over the ocean. It takes about 1.5 hours to circle the island. I cannot recommend it enough just for a great way to see Ischia, the towns and the areas in between. So number six on my list is arguably my favorite thing that I did in my whole time I spent in Ischia, which is to just spend some time exploring the small, quaint, but extremely charming and picturesque towns on Ischia. And inevitably, you will start off at the first town being Ischia Porto, because that is where the ferry comes in. And to me, Ischia Porto had a bit of a touristy feel, but because I went during the off season, it was a little bit like a sleepy fishing village. I saw lots of beautiful uh, buildings with that pastel Italian sort of color, lots of quaint streets to walk down, some more busier than others, lots of restaurants, boutiques, great to do some souvenir shopping here, and hotels, so great place to stay and bake yourself out of as well. And just gives a really good first impression and overall feel for the town of Ischia, or town, island of Ischia that you'll be exploring throughout however much time you could spend there. For complete contrast to Ischia Porto, I recommend just briefly stopping by the town of Fontana or Sorera Fontana 
I'm not sure exactly which it's called. It'll either will appear on Google Maps, I'm sure. Now in contrast, this has more of a mountain town sort of feel versus the sleepy fishing village feel because this is located at the bottom or the base of Mount Napomio. And here there's tiny winding streets going up and down, small little plaza with a very stunning statue of Jesus by a church, beautiful pastel colored buildings, more vineyards and sort of countryside and farmland. So a much smaller, more quaint town. Now, arguably my favorite town that I checked out while being in Ischia was the town of Florio. Now this is the town I talked about a little bit earlier because it was by the Chiesa del Socorso. And this is a very beautiful town. It's not too big, but there's a lot of density in there. A lot more straighter, wider streets. Not too wide, but you can drive down them a little bit. There's lots of cafes, restaurants, little bars. By bars, I mean like the Italian bars, we go and get an espresso, maybe not like a karaoke bar in America, if you catch my drift. Beautiful plazas, a lot of people sitting out, eating food. It seems like there's a strong community there and just a really charming, ridiculously scenic town right by the ocean, the cliffs as well. So definitely recommend spending a lot of time in Forio, just walking around and checking it out. There's also the town of Panza, which was located near the Sorghetto Bay or the Bahia of Sorghetto. Now, I would describe Panza as being more villas, hotels, a lot more residential, but man, oh man, they are beautiful and stunning. This to me reminded me of Santorini, and it's a really steep hill, getting some dramatic coastal hillside villas and hotels. See what I mean, guys? Definitely recommend checking out Panza. And lastly, unfortunately, I didn't get the chance to check out this town. This town is going to be named Sant'Angelo or Sant'Angelo. I don't know. Italians tell me if my pronunciation's wrong. Not just on this, but everything in this video so far. Now the town of San Angelo is located just a bit east of the uh, Bahia Sorghetto or the town of Panza. And this is an extremely scenic, gonna catch me saying a lot of times this video. Scenic, mesmerizing sights, so ridiculously scenic and stunning. Just being able to walk up to it, witness it was very scenic. Very scenic, all white church. It's also uh, pretty scenic, very scenic, really cool. Japanese labyrinth gardens, very scenic. Yeah. I need to add some new words to my vocabulary. Town, which is perched on the end of this cliff between the massive rock of San Angelo and sort of the cliffs and coastal side of the main Ischia Island. The buildings are so crammed tight together that you can't even drive cars through them, which makes things a lot more slower paced and not as crazy with traffic, but more of a residential walking town. Never been, but it looks extremely gorgeous. There's also a little beach and bay right nearby. Definitely need to check out, myself included, San Angelo at a different time. Finally, number seven on my list isn't just one thing, making it just seven by itself. It's sort of a collection of things because there's so much to do in Ischia. I didn't have a chance to do all of it over my two days, but I turned this number seven into an honorable mentions or things I didn't get to do that I would still want to do or recommend other people category. So number one in this honorable mentions is going to be visiting the Giardini La Mortella. This is a beautiful botanic garden from pictures that I could see located in the northwestern part of the island, sort of between Forio and Laco Ameno. And actually this garden was closed when I went due to the coronavirus, very sad, or maybe it was limited hours, but I was not able to visit because it was not open. Definitely my list of things to do because I love botanical gardens and I'm sure that this one is as beautiful as the pictures and the reviews lead it to be online. Another thing that you have to do, or I would like to do as well, is to visit the Fumarole of San Angelo or San Angelo. And this is located on the bay by San Angelo and the Fumarole is actually a thermally heated beach, which is so cool because we know that Ischia has that volcanic activity that it's famous for, but the beach itself is actually hot. So the sand, some of it you can actually walk on. And just like the Baya Sorghetto, people will cook things like uh, eggs or whatever by putting them in the sand and just leaving them for a while and the heated sand will actually cook it. So that'd be a really cool experience to visit a uh, heated beach like that in a really scenic island in Ischia, the Fumarole. That's what they call it, everybody. And of course, when you're on an island, and presumably if you're there during the high season, I was there in the winter, so it wasn't too good of a time of year to do this, but this is going to be have a beach day, visit some of the beautiful rocky or sandy beaches that you can find in the Mediterranean of Ischia. Now, from my research, some of the better beaches is going to be starting off with the Spaggia, the San Mantano. This is gonna be located sort of in that Laco Ameno area by, again, the Negombo Thermal Gardens that we talked about a while ago on this list. I also hear that the Bay of Citra by uh, Forio, which again was the town we talked about with the Chiesa del Socorso, definitely a scenic bay that I've heard and done some research on online as well. And then I've heard of the Maronti 
Spaggia or beach, which is going to be located near San Angelo or San Angelo as well. So those are three beaches that you can decide to check out. There's plenty more on the island as an activity. Definitely should consider having a beach day if the weather permits on the beautiful island of Ischia. So those are my top seven things to do in Ischia, everybody. I absolutely loved it there. I was so excited to visit and it exceeded all of my expectations when I spent two days there. I could easily spend a week there if I was strictly traveling, exploring, sightseeing, or there on vacation too. You have a perfect balance of adventure, restaurants, shopping, relaxation, physical activity, and a variety of different scenic, natural beauty, and different things you can do on the island of Ischia, everybody. So let me know down below, have you done any of these things? Are any of these looking particularly appealing to you? Have you been to Ischia? Are you planning to go anytime soon? Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Don't forget to like and subscribe. That's it. See you in the next video. Peace.